after my last video doing a convex edge I decided I wanted to go ahead and tackle this one as well this is my uh, Bark River Bravo EDC I've got quite a few little nicks and chips in the edge this is a 154 cm steel I've been using this one at work primarily I don't know if you can see those I got some nicks all in it anyway I'm gonna go ahead and get this one sharpened up as well. I'm gonna use my Best in 500, my Nubatama 2K, and then we're gonna finish it out with my Pride Abrasives 10K. I'm gonna go ahead and cut what edge is off. I'm going to go about this in several different ways. I'm going to, of course, use the straight-on method, like what Virtue Vice uses, as well as, I guess, Dutch Bushcraft. The other way I'm going to do is what I call the staircase method. And that's where I start pretty much flat on the stone, and I make single swipes. And after each swipe, I slowly raise the angle. So I'll do a swipe flat, raise it up a tick, do a swipe, raise it up a tick, do another swipe, raise it up a tick until I get to the apex angle. Now that's actually where I'm going to start out because I want to see where this angle of apex actually is located. And that's where it's at. That is uh, that's pretty high. So that being said, I'm going to probably drop this down a little bit. So I am going to thin this out some. I'm not going to bore you guys with that full process, but I will get it started because it's going to it's going to require removing some material. I've got it sitting at about a, I don't know, 15 degree angle or so. My wrist is loose and I'm just going back and forth, allowing that natural rotation of my hand. Now I did add a sharpening notch to this knife, it did not come with one, or if it did I had to enhance it, I don't recall, right off the bat. And I can see just above the existing edge where my grinding is taking place, hopefully you can see that, it's that white light. not hit the bevel yet or rather I have not hit the edge but I am starting to get down into the chips and I can actually see where I've rounded off this tip in my usage so I'm gonna have to try to bring that back as well next up I'm just gonna start doing some swipes as I said each swipe I want to take is gonna be at a different angle I'm just slowly raising it until I get it to the angle that I really wanted at. And you'll hear that on the stone as I'm going. So now I've dropped back down, pretty much flat, raising it a tick, raising it again, raising it again. Still haven't hit that uh, apex fully. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the other side and start grinding from the other side as well. Same principle, I'm just gonna go back and forth, allow my wrist motion to wobble.
inspect my work. Looks like I'm holding my angle a little bit higher on this side than I am the other. So I'm going to drop it down just a little bit. I'm actually going to start doing some long sweeps. I encourage you to slow motion, use the slow motion speed button on YouTube to kind of see what my hand is doing. This goes pretty quick and it's really subtle. The, uh, the, the amount of, of angle that I actually raise this is really small, so it's, it's difficult to see. Now on this side I can see where I'm grinding above the existing bevel. Do a few more swipes, slowly raise it, drop it back down, slowly raise it. Alright, now I'm going to switch back over to the other side. I'm not worried about scratching up the main bevel. It doesn't concern me whatsoever. Okay, I can see where I'm thinning it out here in the main portion. Looks like I still need a lot of work to do in the belly and the tip. So I'm just going to keep at this until I get the geometry where I want it and I get those chips ground out. I'll pick back up with you once I'm done with that. Well, it took me a little work, but I got the tip back. I'm going to have to do some blending to get that to look right. And I got all the chips out. Like I said, I got some blending to do on this guy to make everything look right. You can see back here on the main bevel where I was thinning it out a little bit. We'll go back through and fix that though. So that's where I am right now. I've got no chips. Well, I do have a little bit of one still right there. Right there. So I'm going to get that out with my next stone. So up next, I'm going to use my 2000 grit Nubatoma Ume. I am going to try to grind out the rest of that chip with this stone. So I'm going to place my finger directly over it. And that's where I want to start concentrating from the giddy up. Flip the knife over, do the same thing. Inverted my angle just a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna start blending. I've got some uh, grinding to do here in the base, choil. It's looking pretty good. Do the other side.
I'm not hitting the apex yet. So you see me doing all this, all this grinding. I'm not actually hitting the edge yet. But I'm fixing to. All I'm doing is kind of thinning out behind the edge doing this. Just trying to get everything to blend back together. I still need a little more work in the tip up here and on this side. That side's looking really good. And again, I have not even touched the apex yet. I am concentrating behind the edge right now. Just trying to get everything evened up. Make it look pretty. I'm just about there. Now I'm going to concentrate on actually hitting that apex. I'm just lightly brushing it. My final stone tonight is going to be my Pride Abrasive 10K. And I chose this stone for two reasons. One, it's really hard. And two, because it does a pretty nice job polishing. And I want to get this nice and bright. So I'm just going to start out doing some single strokes. Some different angled single strokes here. I'm going to start out, you know, pretty much flat on the stone, and I'll slowly raise it, and drop it back down, and slowly start to raise, get my little staircase pattern set. And that actually looks like it's doing a pretty good job polishing up the scratches from the 2K. Now it is struggling a little bit, but for what it is, it's not bad. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Start out pretty much flat on the stone. And start to raise it. Drop it back down.
had a comment on a video recently. I think the guy was trying to be a jackass, but he actually got me thinking. He was talking about me using my water stones and oil stones uh, close together and causing grit contamination. I've never personally experienced grit contamination. However, it got me wondering what exactly happens when that occurs. I think what I'm going to do as an experiment is I'm going to take my diamond atonal plate. I'm going to lap an oil stone, take off that top layer so that it's all crusted up inside, inside the diamond plate. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to lap a water stone. And I'm going to leave that generated mess on top of the water stone and sharpen and see what actually happens. What I'll do is some before and after microscopic pictures so we can see exactly what occurs. Now I'm not really worried about ruining my water stone because I use loose silicon grit to lap them. If anything's going to contaminate my stone, uh, I would think this stuff would. And I've never had a problem with that. So honestly, I think uh, I think what's going to happen is the initial you know, top layer is going to have some, obviously, some grit contamination. But as that's washed off and uh, the stone is used, I think it'll slowly go away and stop being a problem. That's my prediction. But it'll be interesting to see what actually happens. And once I'm all done, I'll then go back with my silicon powder. And I will uh, lap my stones and get them back, get them back where they need to be. And that goes for my oil stone as well. Running a diamond plate across an oil stone, all that's going to do is glaze it. I'll need to go back over it with some silicon powder and retexture, recondition the surface. As far as pressure goes, I've never used more than hand weight on any point of this sharpening. I think I'm just about done here, guys. And before I strop this knife, I'm gonna go ahead and run it across some sandpaper and kind of reapply satin finish. And I'll show you guys a little bit of that. As you can see, this thing's all scratched to hell and back. So hopefully this will uh, help remove some of that. Now, I'm using a brand new piece of, I think it's 500 or 400 grit. Ordinarily, I like to use a pretty worn out piece of 600, but the piece that I had was really worn out. There was almost no abrasion, so I needed to switch it, and unfortunately, I don't have any more in that grit. So, I'm going with what I got. Now, I've got a piece of leather underneath this just to give it a little bit of give, but as you can see, sandpaper already has give. So this isn't really a requirement. If you ever decide you want a convex on sandpaper, you don't need a soft backing. The sandpaper by itself is plenty. So all I'm gonna do here, is just lay the knife completely on the sandpaper and just draw straight backwards. Just like that. And I'll do the knife in sections. Now because sandpaper has loose grit, if you go to wipe it off, make sure you wipe in the direction of the scratches. So if any of that loose grit is still on there, it won't, if you wipe this way for example, it won't create striations through uh, the satin you're trying to create. And as you can see, that little bit's already created a really nice, really nice texture. I did miss a little spot here in the tip, so I'm going to go back over it. That's looking real good. I'm going to do that about three or four more times.
That's looking really, really good. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the other side and start on that. I'm not applying pressure here. I'm just trying to keep the knife flat. Applying pressure to sandpaper really doesn't help. I'm sure you guys have used this stuff before. You know all about it. Yeah, this is looking really good. Dropping duties tonight. It's gonna to be my Strop Brothers. Used to be formerly known as Stropman.com. There's smaller Strop here. I'm just using white compound. My preferred favorite. Now I am gonna go over this main bevel that I just ran across some sandpaper. I am going to go across my strop with that just to help kind of blend those scratches in. And I'm just going to run the whole bevel across it a few times. Should be plenty. And just because I got it, I want to do one cut test just to get an idea where the edge is at. I don't know if I've ever measured a fully convexed edge. One oh two, not too shabby. Show you guys the final result here. So you can still see quite a few deeper scratches going on, but it looks a lot better. A lot better than it did when I started. Hopefully you can see that convex, that convexity. Since I sat in the uh, main grind, it doesn't quite look right. It almost looks like a V edge, but it's not. Check that tip. Looks pretty good. Is it sharp? Yes, it is. That'll do some work. Well, guys, if you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them below. I appreciate you watching. Y'all have a good one.